you all for being here. That's super. Um, so I'm a data scientist, and um, what I do on a daily basis is make sense of big data. What I'm going to do right now, I think we'll have a small break afterwards, and some of you will go and pee. What I want to make sure of is that the next time you pee today, or the next time you actually pee, is going to be an experience like no other. <laughs> Just a unique experience, something so mind-blowing, you will not understand what's happening. So this is the goal of this, this talk. Um, I'm using a word del deliberately, here, which, deliberately here, which is hacking. And I'm going to do this to change slides. And we have this idea and this image of hackers, teenagers behind their computers with uh, dirty fingers playing, playing around with their PC. But the truth is, uh, hacking is more than that, is different. Uh, hacking is the very essence of inv uh, inventions and the way science is done, actually. Um, if you think of the last time you read about a hack, you probably saw a website going down, um, and that was because of a hacker. What the hacker did, actually, is use computers he, uh, he didn't have control of before, and actually enslaved them to actually use them, pervert their use, in order to attack a website. So he overloaded that, that website with several visits from millions and millions of PCs. What he did, effectively, is repurpose these PCs. So your PC was supposed to be browsing, thanks to you, but now it's actually visiting a, 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 a specific website. Repurposing is the very outcome of hacking. So if you think about it this way, uh, Claude Monet, the painter, is also a hacker. If you look at this painting, and if you look at the white, which you probably can't see as white here, um, the, the white there, the shaded white, isn't white at all. It's not even gray, it's actually blue. And Claude Monet used blue to represent shaded white. He hacked the color blue. He repurposed it. If you think about um, Sylvia Plath, an old poet, actually, um, I boarded the train, there's no getting off. Using the train image to explain that now she is pregnant and childbirth is something she, she will not be able to stop is genius because she hacked the image of a train that we're, uh, of which you, can't, which you can't leave. And even more to the point is Arnie. I'm a big admirer of weightlifters, actually. I think they're, uh, I mean, what they do is amazing, right? You have a body that is supposed to be uh, built for survival, right? You're supposed to survive with this body, but they pervert the use of this system, this device, to make, it, uh, to make a m muscle machine out of it, right? That you, you just hack the body. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a body hacker. Huh? <laughs> and of course, the best hackers of all are the Japanese. Um, this is an image of a kid. Uh, that was given um, a small, um, you know, small costume with a mop on it. So you take a kid and a mop, a kid is supposed to crawl on the ground. Yeah, I know, exactly. A kid is supposed to crawl on the ground, the mop is supposed to clean the ground, so re you repurpose the kid. You, <laughs> you basically hack a kid, right? Amazing, now, now, they, have a now they have a use. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that? Um, and so, if you look at the, ha uh, at the hack as, uh, as a process, you start out by understanding a system, say the baby, um, connecting the different dots once you broke it down into building blocks, and then you try and repurpose it, just to flip that switch to make it do something else. So if you think of a goose that lays down white eggs, like in the picture, now we're gonna repurpose that goose to give us golden eggs. And that's where it started with happiness. Um, what I had to do, actually, is to hack the brain, and the, brain, the, the way my brain worked. I had experience hacking my own body, dropping down to 7% body fat and stuff like that. Uh, but the thing is, about the brain, it's not geared for happiness. It does something completely different. Your brain is supposed to survive. That is the sole purpose of your brain. Hmm? So what we need to do is actually take down these building blocks in the, in the brain and gear it to happiness. So stuff like uh, anxiety and guilt and fear, the, the reason why you feel, feel guilty actually, it's a, a, uh, according to evolution, is to keep you with your uh, mate, with the, the person, you, your spouse. Uh, and that, uh, that ensures that you're going to reproduce with that person. Because if you leave her, 
there won't be any babies and we won't evolve, we won't reproduce. Same for uh, anxiety. Uh, it was supposed to keep us awake during the nights where there were, there were lions and tigers out there. And fear is what made, made us run away from tigers and lions in the past. Only we don't have any tigers and lions anymore. So this rational fear is now irrational and you're stressing over an exam, which isn't working really. <laughs> so where did this whole happiness thing come about? Uh, I, I lived in an experience where I was waiting for a visa to come to, come to, to the UK. I'm Lebanese, so I'm a Lebanese hacker. Somebody should be calling Interpol. Um, so the, I, I was simply waiting for that visa, and it felt as if my whole life was hinging on that single visa, which was amazing to me. And uh, because my mind is analytical and logical, I just drew my happiness at that moment, and it, it looked like this. What is happiness? What is it? Is it the spike? Is it that B point? Or is it the A, the actual level? And how do I actually increase my happiness? Do I, do I make sure I have more spikes and just sniff cocaine every half hour? Or, sorry, kids around? No. Uh, or do I actually raise my level of happiness and raise that bar, that A? What is it exactly I need to do? And hacking actually comes from the word, it's funny, we, it's ted, a TEDx hackney, but hackney doesn't mean, and it doesn't have anything to do with hack. Hackney means, I checked, I checked. So hackney is a horse uh, used, to, uh, used to move around things. That's hackney. Uh, hack actually me, uh, comes from the uh, German word, word, or Old English, hasian, which is cutting down things into small pieces. And what we're going to embark on right now is eight months of research brought down into eight minutes. Ready? Yeah. Okay, just a single moment. Here's the small sounds around. Ah, somebody's laughing. It's beautiful. Okay, go. So, happiness is physical, people. Sleep and workout, you can't do, you can't do without. You need to sleep, you need to work out. Scientifically proven. The two last ones are a bit more counter, counterintuitive. They're fasting and smiling. If you actually smile, I actually feel happy inside right now. And if you smile, same thing, right? It just reflects what, you, what you're doing, it's amazing. Um, and the reason why fasting actually is, uh, is cool, I fast on every Saturday now, uh, is because fasting does what cocaine does, but uh, for a lower price. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it, tr it releases a, nor a hormone in your brain, which is dopamine, right? And dopamine is the hormone of happiness. More than that, happiness allows you to focus in a way you have never focused like before. Hmm? Um, another thing is oxytocin. Oxytocin is another hormone of happiness. I'm looking at it from a very physical perspective. And this brings us to the next point, which is that happiness is shared. Oxytocin is what we release when I smile and you smile because you saw me smile. It's a mirror neuron. It's what we do whenever we see happiness shared. It's this thing we share socially. It's a social hormone, right? And there is a way actually to buy happiness. Money can buy you happiness. You just need to buy something for someone else, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful trick. Uh, sharing happiness is the way you spread happiness and make yourself more happy. But it, this doesn't tell the whole story. Happiness is minimal. You need to find a way where your happiness doesn't depend anymore on things you can't control. So you need to change the building blocks of happiness. Because if you're hoping for a career change or for a marriage or for your kids to grow up to actually be happy, that's not working out. And your happiness is kind of the spall on a mountain. The second you push it, it's gonna fall down and never go up again. So where the fuck did the, did the ball go? So you, you need to change the building blocks, flip the, habit, flip the actual construct of happiness and make sure that each time you flip that ball, it comes back down. Because if you're building your happiness on things you can't control, it's a gambling attitude, it's, it's wrong. I mean, it's not, it's not working. Uh, so what I have today is actually a single piece of luggage. I threw out everything and sold it on eBay. Gives you extra money. And what I realized actually every morning when I look at this piece of luggage, it's a single, it's a single bag, um, is gratitude. The fact that I really don't need anything more to be happy. Right? And it starts off with that. There are countless studies about a very simple trick you can do every day. Uh, write down the three things you feel the most grateful for every day, end of day. Just sit down. What were you happy about? I was extremely happy to listen to uh, Philippa today, to Jonathan, to, um, um, I forgot your name, I'm sorry, but it was beautiful and your, your feathers, wow, man. Um, and it, you just sit down and really try to remember. And what you're doing there, 
and that's the amazing bit, is that instead of being thinking about anything else, you're choosing to think about the positive stuff. And this is where, in my, uh, in my fall across the rabbit hole, as Alice, <laughs> um, uh, in the rabbit hole of happiness, I, I started realizing it's simply a terrain game. You're winning terrain, you're winning, uh, you're winning that field over something else. Because your mind has a limited attention span and a limited space to think about things, you simply need to conquer that space. Hmm? It's going to become less belligerent in a second. Um, happiness is a habit. So once you realize that you need to occupy that mind space, what do you do? Uh, from my workout experience, I just learned that for something to work, your brain is extremely plastic. You need to keep doing it frequently. A simple, small, effective trick, keep doing it, and it's going to stick. Why? Because you need to imagine your, your brain is like this big green field. Uh, the second you do something, you're stepping over in that field. Uh, the moment you do it again, you're stepping over again, and again, and again, and slowly you're drawing a road in that brain, right? So now you have a road, each time you feel you hesitant, you're just going to follow that road because that's your habit. And the trick here is to change our existing habits. So until now, take that uh, alcoholic person, he's been drinking to feel happy. Uh, the trick about habit change is actually to keep the cue, you're feeling bored, change the routine, chat to people, but keep the same reward, you feel good. And so, it's going to become clear here, uh, this is my brother, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> happiness is a habit, just, just like a workout, just like a muscle, you need to keep working. This guy didn't get here, not, not like it's an accomplishment, but this guy didn't get there uh, just by going to a workout, you know, two days a week. He actually went there every single day. So it's a, it's a habitual thing, it's an effective, the, the word you can't see there is frequent, simple and effective. Something very simple, very effective. And now I had this, this dot, and the other dot I needed to connect with is that this small thing, single thing needed to be something I have, something nobody can take away from me, all right? And so, happiness is a habit, but the big question was, which habit? Um, this is where I actually jumped into Stoicism and Seneca. Seneca used to dress as a, uh, with very cheap clothes and walk in the city. So he was a very glamorous uh, philosopher. Why? Because he wanted to practice misfortune. He actually put himself in a situation where the worst was happening. What's the worst that could happen? This is it. And I'm still feeling okay about it. Stoicism is about three things, and the reason why Bruce Lee is here is because he was a, a big practitioner. You need to practice misfortune, simply place yourself in a, in a thought frame where, where you're seeing actually the worst thing that could happen to you. Train your perception to understand that good and bad don't mean much. What you need to focus on is learning. So if someone tells you your work is really average, what you, re what you need to think about is rather, I am learning so that my next piece of work is going to be better. And the last point is that everything is ephemeral. So one down there. So sto if stoicism helps you turn these bad thoughts into good ones, that's a habit. How do you make sure that you have more positive thoughts? And this is where happiness as flow comes in. Flow is that moment where you don't feel time going by anymore. Either you're dancing or you're writing or you're doing your, your favorite thing, maybe it's uh, watching a series even, anything that actually makes time stop, uh, feels like time stops, right? And so you need to do more of what makes you happy. Um, baking that into your day more and more. And that is where I actually started having a meeting with myself. Uh, it's, a calendar, it's a calendar event every week, uh, Saturday, uh, because you need to commit to it one, one, day, uh, one way or another. And I simply sit down with myself. The first time it was very awkward. It was like, hi. <laughs> hey man, how are you? Uh, why have you been snoring? I haven't, actually. Um, and you, you slowly actually break it down into the, the several health aspects um, and uh, d dive into what, what, what it has been that's been troubling you during the week. Just time for yourself. It's an hour long. And then I think the biggest insight came in. Happiness is actually not that important. And whether what we, I'm going to, what this talk is going to lead to uh, actually reflects that or not, it's still an important insight in that happiness un and unhappiness are just um, so unreliable, so, um, uh, 
so, so not under your control that maybe there's something completely different you need to focus on. And this is where this appeared, actually. I realized that A and B don't mean anything. It's actually C. It's a curve that exists in another dimension, something completely different, um, that needs to occupy your mind. So it's not really happy thoughts you need to populate your mind with. It's just focus. Focus on anything, really. And it will still um, put your mind in that flow space where you can actually feel um, just positive, better about things. And this led to... Uh, a big dot connection. So I had all these insights. What do I do with them? I just pulled them out. And, uh, and of course, I'm a data scientist. Um, I have a company today. Uh, we're working on um, uh, linking applications to payment cards and powering applications. And obviously, what I wanted to do is develop an application. But what would an application for happiness look like? It's like, oh, God. And the, the big hack here, the big insight was, and that's what we call a grand hack, because you actually use the limitations of a system to turn them into benefits. A hacker uses the fact that a computer is stupid to control it and make it do something. You're, you are a hunter. You evolved in a space where you actually needed to hunt, but your attention is limited. So your attention is powerful, your focus is beautiful, it is limited. If you can conquer it and actually make it focus on something, you've won. And this is where Again, Marvel came in. Uh, Marvel is um, an application in production, and uh, these are the sketches, and it basically shows you uh, how to be more happy. <laughs> and the big trick is that think about these small moments in everyday life. Uh, sometimes the smell of coffee or the touch of the hot, um, of the hot cup, even a, using a pen or the touch of a smartphone, how beautiful the windows open, how beautiful you can slide them. It's amazing, right? But you don't really realize it. Now, there is a trick to, to actually do it, and there's a list of things you can choose off uh, to be more amazed about them, because it's a shame to let uh, life pass by without being amazed by things and marveling at them. So you have peeing, brushing your teeth, you have the car sounds, um, your breath, uh, your favorite enemies. Uh, eyebrows. <laughs> try, try it. This is beautiful. Wow. It's like several small hairs there. He, I hate that guy, but wow. He has beautiful eyebrows. <laughs> wow. And this is where it starts. So now you're going to pee, right? And it starts like this. Very simple. Five cards, five steps. It's the second and that's so important, but the trigger needs to be very specific. It's the second you touch the door handle, okay? You're opening up an arena. It is an arena. You are in front, just like me, put more yourself in my position, and you're in front of thousands of people. This is not another peeing day. This is not another <laughs> trip to the toilet. This is the peeing grand master um, uh, competition, and you are a peeing master. This is not random. Something is at stakes here. And realize at the same time how little you need for this to happen, actually. All you need is you, right? No money, no cars, no nothing, no friend, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and the next step, once you realize you're in this arena, make sure you're doing everything for the speed to be perfect. So, gentlemen, you'll work on your position and your aim. And just make sure, actually, just focus. I am peeing, I am going to hit that spot so well, so good. This is going to be the best pee in my, in my life. And uh, ladies, you can focus on the posture. Just make sure you're... Uh, sitting like you've never sat. This is, I am going to sit so well, do this so well, it's going to be perfect. And once you've done that, start focusing on other things. Draw your attention to the sounds. What, what was the last time you actually heard yourself be? What was the last time you looked at the water turning from clear to yellowish, to yellow, to very yellow if you drank the last night, to just see these subtleties and the fact that you have these ripples. It's water in a porcelain thing changing form because you are there pouring some liquid that ran through your body with all the toxins and is dripping in there. What? How magical is this? Millions of years that led to this specific moment. You are peeing like you have never done before. And the last bit is when another thought is going to try and come in. Oh, God, I need to get back to work. This is taking too much time. I'm so fascinated by it. But no, no. There's a moment where you realize this is the only thing you should, would, or could be doing. This is all there is. This is it. It's beautiful. Yeah. 
And this is how you simply marvel at reality. Instead of being, now I can actually touch this microphone and feel how unique this touch is. It's very different from this or from anything else, really. Aldous Huxley, in his last book um, after Best of, uh, Best of Worlds, uh, the, cold, the book was called Island, and um, the guy ends up on, uh, in a ship, shipwreck and ends up on an island. And on this island, there are people that are tremendously calm, beautiful, focused people that enjoy life like uh, very much. And there are parrots on this island. And the people of this island uh, told the parrots, uh, taught them to say attention, attention, here, now, all the time, right? To remember that all we have is actually what we have in our hands, what we have right now. We don't have the luxury of having these parrots. Somebody can play it if you want. But we don't have it. So we need to bake these parrots into our lives, these constant reminders that every single moment is so unique so beautiful. So I'm going to close my eyes. If you grace me with your applause, I'm just going to enjoy this moment like never before. Thank you. Yeah.